Okay, so y'all just heard that little clip right here. From this point on, I'm going to just refer to Kamala Harris as Kamala the Clown. So a couple months ago, she made a fool of herself when she said she was in college and she listened to Snoop's album. Mind you, when she was at Howard, she went in the 80s and she graduated in the 80s. And Snoop's first album didn't come out into the early 90s. So unless she knew Snoop for doing some underground work and she heard some unreleased stuff that we never heard, that would be impossible. Now, fast forward to this. She had an interview with Angela Rye. And Angela asked her, who is the greatest rapper alive in her opinion? And this chick sat there and said, Tupac. And you should have heard, and the way that she said it was almost in a question form and not as a straightforward answer. And Angela said, well, Tupac's not alive. And then she says, oh, you know, he, like his legend, his legacy lives on. So basically she was trying to save her instead of correct her. This is another reason why I keep saying the sisterhood of failure is referred to as what it is. She didn't try to correct, she, um, she didn't try to say that it was wrong. She tried to save her. And she looked like an even bigger fool. Now, what makes this even more interesting is um, when she goes on and tries to name a rapper that is currently alive that she would say is the greatest rapper alive. And she's like, uh, there's just so many, meaning she doesn't know one rapper she can think of. But she's the same one who will be, quote unquote, dancing to a lot of these rappers. And it's crazy that she didn't flat out say Cardi B, even though that would have been a flat out lie. But she could have threw her out there. Isn't she the same one that been dancing to Cardi B a couple months ago? She could even say Megan Thee Stallion. I'm just throwing those names out there, ones that I think that she would know or should know. But she threw out Pop, a man who has been dead. Since 1990 was seven or six. I keep getting years mixed up between him and Biggie. Someone's going to correct me down in the comments. At least I know the DC of the man is unfortunately no longer with us, unlike her. And when someone has sent me this on Instagram, I said this was about as bad than when 45 had mentioned Frederick Douglass in the present tense. I mean, both of them are cringy, but hers was almost as bad because she has been pandering hard to black people for so long. This is a perfect example of an individual who is completely out of touch with reality, especially our reality when she has to say something as clownish as that. But see, Angela had to save her. And this isn't the first time that Angela has come and saved um, a black woman from putting, well, it's a huge question mark over Kamala Harris. But this isn't the first time she saved a black woman from putting her foot in her mouth. I remember Angela had was on some panel a couple of years ago when this woman had got up there and it was it was some kind of woman's empowerment thing. And it was a black woman that got up there and she was talking about, well, I'm a single mother. I have like five kids and they all have different dads. I don't know what to do and all types of stuff like that. Well, and then she couldn't really give her an answer. And instead of giving her a straightforward answer and telling her that this woman about herself, she gets up and gives her a hug. But then say that us as black men have to be accountable for our actions. If it was a black man that was up there, I'm almost certain. Well, one that's not a gynocrat or a maggle would have told her what she had to do and what to get her life on track. If she could, at this point, with her having five children by five different men, her life is already spiraled out of control. But, yeah, from now on, I'm going to just refer to her as Kamala the Clown. This is the second time she is, as that I know, has done something like this. And I talked about this in my live stream the other day. I said... This woman is pandering so hard that people get so excited when they see her wearing Timberlands, not even constructs, but just Timberlands or wearing Chucks. I'm like, OK, she's not the first nor the last person to wear any of those shoe brands. OK, so what? She's not the first woman to wear them. She's not the first person to wear them. But they think that her wearing those shoes is supposed to sway us into supporting her. But that's how low they think of us. And the fact that she thought that Tupac was still alive, like I said, lets us know how out of touch with reality she really is. And also, too, whether he was alive or not, that's still not going to that's still what not garner our votes in her in Joe Biden's direction. OK, I mean, 
all this just felt like she was like Angela was giving her some kind of a black test. Like she didn't ask her who, in your opinion, was the greatest rapper of all time. She said greatest rapper alive. But yeah, Kamala the Clown strikes again. All right, so I had to come back in here and insert this part right here that I didn't even know was a part of the original clip that you just heard. This is actually a couple days later after the first part that you just heard when she thought Tupac was still alive. But I want you to listen real closely to the response she gives to Angela Rye when she asked her about her pressing charges against the three terrorists that killed Breonna Taylor. And speaking, I'm speaking her name. The attorney general in the state, Daniel Cameron, did just that at the RNC. He spoke her name, and then there are these charges for bullets shot into the home of her white neighbor, but not bullets um, that killed Breonna Taylor. Given the fact that you were a prosecutor, would you have pressed charges against the three officers involved in the case? Well, I don't, I don't know all the details of the case, but I will say this, that there needs to be transparency about what happened and that family and that community deserve justice. And, um, and that's just the bottom line. In layman's terms, no, she would not press charges against them. But are we even surprised? Because a lot of people have brought up this name to me, uh, Matrice Richardson, who was a black woman who died or was killed under her watch while she was out there in California and she didn't get justice. Same thing with Oscar Grant, same thing. So everybody who's out here holding hands with this woman and you are a black woman, she just basically gave you her response as she doesn't care about you either. She doesn't care about black people at all while trying to be down and be a part of the sister girl circle. She is not to be trusted. It was a simple yes or no question. And she gave this roundabout response that all she had to do was give a simple word that had two letters in it. And those, that word was no. She would not have pressed charges. But what do we, you know, what do we expect? This is the same woman that said, or when in, uh, in response, to the question, would she do something specifically for black people when it came to tangibles? And her response then was no. So every time it comes to black people, it's always going to be a no. This is the same woman that said that if she was to get in the office, she would open up Congress or to try to find immigrants a spot there. Nothing for black people born here. But for immigrants, yeah, she'll open it up for them. Now, y'all have to be very careful and vet these people who you are supporting. But you know what? I feel like this could fall on deaf ears because people are still going to overlook this and they're going to continue to support their own downfall. But it is what it is. That's that's another part of the American way. 